Hi, and welcome to the Happiness Coach Podcast. My name is Lori Brandt, and I am the Happiness Coach. I believe our natural state is peace and calm. And the only thing keeping us from living life from that centered space are our limiting beliefs. It's my understanding that thoughts like, I'm not worthy, I'm not safe, or I'm not enough can be eliminated. Once revealed and questioned, they begin to lose their hold so that our natural state of greatness can rise up and into our present day experience. On this podcast, you'll listen in on real life coaching calls, interviews with leading experts, and open discussions exploring limiting beliefs and their transformation. If after listening, you found it interesting or helpful, please follow and share. If it inspired you to consider becoming a life coach yourself, visit my website for upcoming ICF approved life coach certification training dates at www.lauriebrandt.com. All right, let's jump in and get started. Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to discuss the common strategy of saying yes, or giving our time, talents, and energy to everyone automatically without considering any alternate response. You know who you are, the overscheduled, stressed out, want to, but can't do it all people. I'm talking to those who stop using their calendar because they already know there's no room for anything else in it. Or I'm talking to the person out there that has self-care booked in an hour time slot once a week, but still manages to book other things in its place. Even though self-care is on the calendar, there's no self-care happening. (laughs) I'm talking to those people today that want something different. Those people that want to be able to say no without the guilt, without feeling bad. I'm talking to everyone who gives because they believe they're supposed to give because that's the right thing to do. That's what you've been taught. That's all you know. Is that you? How's it working for you? (laughs) Chances are the feel good, warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart you expected to feel by saying yes isn't showing up. Instead, you're feeling overwhelmed, worn out, depleted, resentful, sad, disappointed. Giving is supposed to feel good, right? It can. It can feel amazing. It can feel like love washing over you, out and around the person you're giving to. It can wash over the whole rest of your day and into everything you do. But in order for giving to have those results, the decision to give needs to come from an aligned place, a place where you are completely connected, aligned with your true self and not attached to the outcome of the giving. If you're not feeling good after giving, experiencing even slight discomfort, then you're not giving from an aligned place. You're giving from the intention of getting something back. Now this is the tricky part. The tricky part is isolating the motivation behind the giving. What are you hoping to get from it? If you're expecting anything, if you're attached to a particular outcome, response or a feeling, chances are you're not giving from your heart, but instead you're giving from your brain. It might be that you're giving because you don't want to disappoint people. You don't want to disappoint them because then they might not not like you. You might expect to feel good inside if you give. Well, that's an expected outcome. You might be giving because you've been told, give and you shall receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. So you give with the expectation that giving is required for abundance. 
you might be giving your time because it makes you feel important, valuable, needed, loved. Whatever the attachment, it is the attachment or the expectation that makes the giving different from giving from the heart. When we give from the heart, we give from the essence of who we really are. It is love extended, love expanded, without boundaries, attachment or expectation. The exhilaration is in the giving. The ownership of the giving is irrelevant because to own it, to claim it, is not possible. It is not possible to corral greatness. Its expansiveness is not containable and the thought to try to do so is laughable. So when we give from a place of alignment, we give from love as love. The intention to give is born from love. It's what love does unconditionally. It is in the intention of giving from the love that you are that resonates with the feeling of love within you. It's continuous and all encompassing. Nothing else is required or desired. The connection to the state where intention originates is everything. So why are we not all doing that then? Because we have learned to give differently. We have learned that if we give, we get something back in return. Giving is being used as currency by our brain. I'll do this for you if you do something for me. I'll do this for you, but be prepared to pay me back. I'll do this for you, so my parents will be proud of me. I'll say yes, so you'll think I'm capable. I'm smart or I'm important or reliable. My client on this podcast shares a bit about her religious teachings and how the act of giving has been muddied by childhood experiences and perceptual interpretations. Listen in as I work with her to isolate the motivation and the thought processes surrounding the act of giving. What is the belief that if you don't give enough? I don't give it. Yeah, what will happen? I just think I'm, it, it'll be like, you're being selfish. You're not, you're not being. Okay. So if you're give, selfish, give, 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 give. Like, and then if you're selfish, what does that mean? Or what does that say about you? If you're selfish? Well, I think that means that, um, you think too much of yourself. Like yeah, I, I'm too good to do that. Or I'm too, I'm too, um, that's beyond that's above, that's, that's below me or, or above me, whatever, whichever the case may be, but uh, below me to say to you, no, I'm not going to do that, or, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice my own happiness so that you can be happy. And then I think about them. If I say no, and I think about them, okay, I'm out doing, I'm having fun, I'm out shopping, and I'm out doing things with my friends. And I think, well, they're at home because I couldn't help them. So are you telling me the message that you got over 35 years that if you, you should sacrifice your happiness for someone else? Not my happiness, not my happiness, but talks a lot about, church talks about being prideful or being, um, um, you're doing great. So tell me about how is it being prideful to do what it is that you want to do? I think you're supposed to think of others before you think of yourself. Because if you're thinking of uh, in the way where the church is concerned, you're thinking Christ always gave first. And I'm at the point where I don't even know if I believe in Christ anymore. And so to me, that's like. Um, but you're still living according to the doctrine that you've been raised on. Well, some of it. I'm not living to the standards of the church, obviously. But to think of others first. Yeah, to think of others yeah. first before I think of myself. Because um, that's just. It's something I've been all my life, even as a child, before I was a member of that church. I was always, like, the person that was always... Okay, so you know what? Giving, Let's giving. just explore what that means. Okay, so to think of others before yourself first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that mean? Like, let's really make some standards of what that means. Well, I just think... Um, I would give like just I would give somebody my last dollar if I had, if it, if it meant that they could have 
a coffee or, or, or whatever they needed, you know. And so um, I think it stems a lot from my dad was like that. Like he would just take the shirt off his back and give it to the person on the street if they needed it. He wouldn't care, you know. And we weren't very, we didn't have a lot of money. So um, things that possess, things that we had were precious to us. But, and okay. I think that comes from the childhood. Um, that was before I was even a member of this church, that church. Okay. I, I and have you ever had a good experience of doing that? Like where you gave someone yeah. something? Yeah. Okay, so can you tell me about that? I gave somebody the coat off my back. Okay. <laughs> she and said, I really, really, really like your coat. And I'm like, okay. And it was middle of winter and I just took it off and gave it to her. She, that, she wasn't a poor person. She wasn't a homeless person on the street. She was just a person that I knew and a member of the church actually. And she said, I really like that coat. I'm like, okay. And I gave it to her. And so she's like, no, 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 it's cold. I'm like, no, no, it's, like, it's not a possession. It's a possession, right? And so I think we also talk about... Um, okay, so I'm interested in what you felt in that moment. Okay, so I, I felt so, good. I felt good okay. that I gave her that. I'm like, I felt happy. It made me feel good to give her that because she really liked it. And, you know, I've always been a giver kind of person. And so okay. I give, give, give all the time, you know. And so sometimes I think I resent the fact that People don't want to give to people don't give to me the same as I give to them. You know what I mean? I think, wait a minute, like, and so I did this for you and this for you and this for you, and you don't want to do any. You didn't, you know, you won't do it for me. And so, or for work, cause I always people want day, the weekend off, and I say they always call me because I say yes, 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 yes. And then there was a time when I was taken off to Las Vegas on a last minute trip. And I asked for people to work for me, and they didn't want nobody. Nobody came up to say yes, and I'm like, "Wait a minute! It's like, I would drop what I'm doing right. to work for you, and and, and it doesn't have anything to do with the money. The money, like I said, I like money, but it has to do with just that's just how I am, kind of thing. But then when the same thing happened and nobody stepped up for me, I'm like, "Oh, well, I'm going to Vegas, so I don't know what you're going to do that weekend because I'm not going to be here." So. What I'm hearing is that there seems to be a difference, though, between the time when you gave that coat off your back uh -huh. because they asked and it felt good right? compared to someone asking you to babysit on the weekend right? and you saying yes. Yeah, sometimes that doesn't make me feel good. Okay, so yeah. can, tell me about that difference. Well, I think... When I give something out of the goodness of my heart, it makes me feel happy and it makes me feel like I did something good for that person. When I do it out of resentment or I do it out of obligation, maybe the obligation is mm -hmm. a good word to use. If I do it, out, I feel it out of obligation, It, I feel more angry or more resentful for that. Like, okay, I'm here. And then especially if they say, okay, we're going to be home at three o'clock and then it's five o'clock and I'm like, and I get upset because I'm thinking, well, they're taking advantage of me here because I, they said they'd be home at three and it's already, you know, especially when I have to work in the night and then I have to work in the morning again. And I'm like, come on people. Like, and so uh, I guess I get to the point where I'm like, <sighs> okay. So I heard that you feel this strong connection to give from, because that's what Jesus did. Yeah. And in that coat scenario, that sounds very much like that. Right. But when we're talking about, you know, someone asking you to babysit. Right. Yeah. It's not the same thing. No, it's not the same no. thing. And, you know, let's just go there. Like, do you think Jesus would want to babysit every weekend <laughs> and feel compelled to do that because they asked? I don't know. Because I said, I don't really know if I, I really, if I, if I go by the Bible, I would say, probably. I don't know. He would probably do it, but um, so regardless of anything else he had planned, if somebody asked him to to babysit, right? Well, he the, would, that's a hard he scenario would, because, like, I don't even know if like that's he exists, you know. So now, it's but let's totally, just you if know, he did it, exist, yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe he'd get his apostles to do it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, isn't that interesting? <laughs> get somebody else to do it. Yeah. You considered that Jesus would entertain alternate possibilities right. yes. to find a solution for the people that really needed someone right. and not jump the gun and say, yeah, I'll drop everything because you asked. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, so um, you're actually asking more of you than perhaps maybe Jesus would have done himself. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>
That's quite a high standard. In order to break the habitual responses of saying yes, or giving without consideration to our well-being, we need to tune into our bodies, take the time to draw ourselves inward and align with our true nature. From that place, we can create space, a space between an experience and our habitual response, a space that allows for insight, inner wisdom and possibilities to arise, a space for the birth of a new strategy, one that supports us and motions us inward to our natural state of peace, calm and happiness, a space of love showing up as space, your natural state appearing. From there, you feel your heart, you can sense your alignment and your response becomes infused with love for yourself, everyone or everything. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Lori Brandt, the happiness coach. If you enjoyed the program, please go to iTunes and follow rate or leave a comment. If you're interested in one-on-one coaching, life coach certification, go to my website, lauriebrandt.com, or perhaps even attending our Unleash Your Greatness conference. So greatness can reflect back in beautiful Ridgeway, Ontario at the Buffalo Canoe Club on the shores of Lake Erie. You can learn more at www.unleashmygreatness.com.